Let's take a quick tour of Manage Online and we'll follow a customer's repair order from estimate through to invoice. So we get a visit from Rose Hutchins, who comes into our shop with a problem with her vehicle. Rose has been here before, so we'll quickly search for Rose by her last name in our database. You can also use the percentage sign as a search all to see all your customers listed. Now Rose has brought her 2011 Chevy Cruze today, so we'll choose that. That's the only vehicle Rose has, but if she had two or three or even more, we'd have those listed here to choose from. Okay, this is our main work screen, and this is the mileage for Rose's vehicle the last time she was in our shop. So we'll come over to the right side of our work screen, and all of this data is optional, but completing these fields will help make my workflow a lot more efficient and effective. Now Rose is complaining about some problems with her brakes, and when we did a quick scan of her vehicle, we pulled a P0304 code. So we'll start by adding Rose's symptoms and issues up here. Now when I type in symptoms for the first time, I can always save it to my list, so next time, just one click adds it to my work document. But I'll just add this one straight away today. We can search for the description for that P code in the DTC section. Simply type the P0 code number, hit enter, and that's our description to add to symptoms automatically. And we can do the same with the work description. Let's add a service rider. We'll add a primary technician for the whole repair order. And at this point, we'll also assign a color-coded work type for the estimate. Work type and status are really going to help us later on to see our repair order in different stages of my workflow. OK, let's build this estimate for rows. To add job groupings to my work document, I can select from a number of options in my Add Job list here. Let's describe these real quick. Blank is used to name a new job grouping and assign a technician if you want. Jobs allows you to add pre-built custom jobs directly to the work document. Labor adds a labor line item manually. Labor times gives you access to the OEM labor catalog and part information. Maintenance gives you access to manufacturer recommended service interval jobs and information. The parts link allows you to add a part from your inventory parts list. And quick parts is a list of commonly used items in your inventory. Catalog takes you to the electronic OEM and aftermarket catalogs used for electronic parts ordering. And tire sales is exclusively for adding tires and related charges from your tire inventory. I'll go to my global custom jobs list and under diagnostic and inspection, I'll select my diagnostic electronic custom job. We'll add that to my work document. And that brings over the work description as well and auto populates it here in the field. So we'll mark the vehicle on site and so I can keep track of her keys with my other vehicles, I'll assign her a key tag number. And I explain to Rose the cost of the diagnostic, which she approves, and I let her know that I'll email her the full estimate once we've completed the diag. Now when the tech completes the diagnostic, he uses the advisory note field and recommends replacing the spark plugs to fix the misfire fault code, as well as a front brake job. And he noticed the air filter was pretty dirty and that that should be replaced soon as well. So these notes will appear on the customer's documents and they're a great way to message recommended services and findings. So with the tech notes added, we need to add parts and labor to complete our estimate for rows. We'll start with a global custom brake job. Under brakes is a standard front brake job. Then we'll go directly to our order zone and OEM catalog and start with the labor times for the brakes and rotors first. So the top of our pick list is brake pad. We'll add the OEM labor time for that. And scrolling down, I see the labor times for the rotors. Add those two to my cart. And back to my pick list, I'll get some brake pads. Now these are a good choice for rows. And we'll do the rotors also. If I click the shopping cart, I can confirm everything I have so far. And we'll click add to document to bring those to my working document. Now I also need spark plugs, so let's quickly get those and the labor directly from our catalog link. Let's save some time here and just keyword search for those. Much quicker to filter results that way. 
Okay, we know her vehicle requires iridium, so those are our best shot there. Add four of those. And before I go back to my work document, let's go directly to the OEM catalog for labor times on the spark plugs. And because we started with the AutoZone catalog, we can take advantage of our linked part categories feature and go directly to the labor times from there. Add to document. And the last thing to add for Rose's job is the air filter job. We'll add that to the document and we're all set with this estimate. Now since I want a better chance of Rose agreeing to this whole job, I'm going to delete the diagnostic charge and email her the estimate. Now she calls us back and says she thinks her husband can do the air filter job. Well, we don't want to lose that job entirely, so just in case, we'll actually defer that one so we can send her a reminder in a few weeks with our CRM tool and possibly get her back in the shop. Now Rose agrees to the work. We create the RO, and since our state requires authorization, we can note that here in the system. All right, we'll set a do in and do out time for the job. And we'll also assign a color-coded status. This is really going to help us drive our work in progress screen. Next thing I'll do in my workflow is I'm going to assign this RO to my bay scheduler. And you can actually label these bays with the technician's names if that's better for your shop. Rose's RO is awaiting assignment down here. So I'm going to drag and drop it into a time slot in one of the bays in my scheduler. And if we go and check the job on the service writer's view of the work in progress screen, we can see Rose's RO is awaiting work start. And if I were the technician and I was looking at their view, they'd also show that the job is awaiting work start. Now we haven't ordered any parts yet, so the technician or the service writer for that matter drags the job to the next status. So let's order those parts and get them into our shop as soon as possible. We'll select order receive. We'll select the parts to order from AutoZone. Run an inquiry to make sure of availability and then click order. I can add some message for the driver here and we're good to go. We can see that the parts are ordered on the work screen by the amber check marks here. Now when the parts actually arrive, we need to go back and process the receipt of those parts into our system. Adding the PO is a really helpful way to track where your parts came from and for which job. Okay, back to the work screen and our parts are now checked in green to show us that they're received. Now back to our WIP screen, the service rider can now move this to waiting on tech. And the technician immediately sees that status change on his view. And the tech drags the job to in bay and starts the work on the vehicle. Now, once the tech completes the work on the vehicle, he can change the status of the job again, run a quick test drive. And if we look at his view, he sees the job in the bay and he can then move it to work complete. We can access the work document quickly just by double clicking the RO here. And we can contact Rose very quickly by text to let her know that her vehicle is ready for pickup. Rose calls back to say she'll be in about an hour. Now in the meantime, we also notice that Rose's timing belt is probably due for replacement pretty soon. So we can use our reminder section here to set a reminder and on her return, we can suggest that as another possible job. Okay, when Rose comes back to pick up her vehicle, we process her invoice, confirm the mileage out, 
And here's where it's really important to grab a media code so we can track how our customers are finding us and whether any of our marketing efforts are actually working or not. And again, we can save Rose a bunch of paperwork and email her the invoice and we'll print out a copy for our records. Now remember that air filter job Rose deferred? Let's send a reminder message to our customers who have a deferred job from the past couple of months. So from reports, we'll go to Customer Relationship Manager or CRM, we'll choose the deferred work reminder and we'll select date range. Now we've got a couple of customers who had deferred work. Our deferred work message will automatically populate the fields we set for that message and we can text or email. Let's email this one. Hit send, it's that easy. Lastly, hey, check out our in-product step-by-step guides for everything from setup functions to searching for customers. Step-by-step -step information bubbles help you and your new staff get up to speed easily and efficiently.